The architect for this job suggested that a smaller door was needed for an opening between a kitchen and a bathroom. And rather than make a new door or buy a door, I offered to make the existing door smaller since it really has quite architectural historical value, the building as it is. It seems a shame to change more than is needed the parts of the building. So this little film is going to cover the steps that I took to make this door smaller and in the background I've got some improvisational guitar music playing, drum and, drum and guitar. I don't know if that's come off. Maybe this bit here has perhaps dropped off the bottom of the of the other piece. It might come off there and glue it back on. I'm gluing one already there. Transferring the details of the joint over a few centimetres. It's uh, it's kind of a bit nerve-wracking really because the chances of making a mistake are quite big and you haven't really got you haven't got a second chance with this you have to do it right the first time so I'm being very careful making a lot of measurements and checking my measurements I'm trying to concentrate really hard so that I don't make a mistake So typically with handmade furniture like this, handmade pieces in buildings, it's not symmetrical. The top and bottom pieces of wood there are different lengths, so that has to be taken into consideration. The door could very well be different size as well, not symmetrical. So you can't just take a set of measurements and then assume that it's correct. You, everything has to actually just be individually transferred one thing to the next. a little bit of unconventional use of the jigsaw and I'm using it like this because I want to really see clearly what's being cut and the important part of the joint. I'm not just cutting straight to the line at once necessarily. I mean that little ridge there. There's a little step inside that joint. I'm really just watching for the blade to see what it's really cutting and then just making adjustments. See, I'm going backwards and forwards there. Can you see that? I have to go back because I want to make sure the blade is actually cutting what I want and not put it you know, to, to 
get control over it. It's not flat on the piece of wood there either, you see I was tipping it up. Because the cut is has a few degrees, it's like 12 degree cut or something. It's not perpendicular, or well, it's not 90 degrees anyway, to the, that surface that you can see in the picture. It's dovetailed, a dovetail joint. But they've put wedges and they made it. Maybe we should just take them away. Looks like they might have been actually glued in. It's interesting because, of course, PVA is quite a modern invention, so they must have had hide glue heated on the building site in those days. Oh, there's a nail sticking through there as well. bevel there is a bit tight, which is good because I can saw through it. Of course I want that to be true before I do it. through the saw to get it off quickly. This is all going to be the same, it'll be 18 centimetres smaller, the same as the frame. Uh, obviously I'll, I will actually put the frame together first, measure it first to make sure it's okay. I don't want to take the door handle off and it's really it's just a rough cut so I'm just going to use the circle saw and it might seem a little bit brutal to do this but 
this is a way of saving this door. It would have just gone. I mean, it, I mean, you know, it would have perhaps gone into storage and been used for something else. But it, it's, uh, it's cheaper to do this uh, adjustment and preserve the uh, authenticity of the door rather than making a copy of it that's smaller. See, this this is mortised all the way through. There's a tenon that goes right the way out to the outside edge. So it has to be 11 centimetres. So you see, I'm going, to, I'm going to use that wood there for the tenon. So that actually the bit that's wasted is only this bit. So this is the bit where I can cut that, that little channel there. It's, there's no harm of cutting there. So it doesn't have to be neat. I'm just going to use a circle saw to do that. Although this saw doesn't actually have a new blade in it at the very moment of this filming, this green Bosch circle saw, I think I probably bought it in about 1996, and it still works nicely, it's still very accurate, I'm very used to using it, and I wouldn't buy another circle saw until this one broke down completely. I do have other circle saws, but they're battery driven, or smaller blades, for different you know, different uses. Because they don't really have to go all the way out either, actually. But it would be a lot easier if they were around. Although not entirely necessary to take those panels out, I thought it would be easier to cut them on the bench saw, the new profile on them and I don't actually have footage of doing that but it was just simply done on the bench saw, it was quite a simple cut. That was simple really, the difficult bit was making the joints and making them all perfect and it took a lot of small adjustments to get them perfect. Started off by making all of the joints slightly too large and then just whittled them down. Quite well, isn't it? Clearly, do with a little bit of white. They're just held together with wedges. There are no nails or anything. It's just a, a wedge on either side. It's interesting. I'm looking forward to taking these ones out to see exactly how they're made. I decided to do the door at 77 centimetres wide. It's cut. I'm sure that the that my mortises are going to be completely perfectly. Uh, they're not going to be completely full. At least. What did I do it at 77? I had, I had thought I was going to do it at 76, but. I want to do it at 77. I'm going to do a down line of sight like this. And
not going to cut the line off. I'm going to leave the line. I've got my new glasses, you see. They've got um, their bifocals so I can see close up to. The way I do this is I line up the two surfaces in my eye until they disappear. And then when they disappear, that's where I can see, you know, it's like a kind of line of sight. I just use one eye. As I said, I'm not going to cut the line off. I'm going to leave the line behind as reference. In other words, I'm going to make it bigger. It's like all of the stuff I do. I, I had so many bad results relying on uh, numbers for doing this kind of thing that I've just kind of stopped, stopped doing that now. actually set the depth on the surface saw a little bit and uh, what it needs to be because I'm just very cautious not to cut too deep. This is a kind of one attempt, it has to be just right. But I still want the work to not drag on too long because this is a job that's paid by the hour and it just becomes too expensive if you lavish too much time on it. As it is, altering this door is almost as expensive as having a new factory made door. But of course that wouldn't be anywhere near as cool as this one is. Also, the old door has architectural significance because it's uh, original to when the building was built, and it's beautifully made. So I want to try and do at least as good a job of the woodwork as the original builder, which is stretching my skills really. 
I'm not really a cabinet maker or anything. I'm a chopping builder. use the press because I've got so many to do. The, uh, the router. So you have to cut first and then route. I think it's worth, it's definitely worth having the router for these. I'm going to go and set that up because I have a uh, Still seven to do. So. It's supposed to be fourteen point five isn't it? Really. I'm going to be sure that that doesn't change now. You sometimes get a little bit loose these fine adjustment tools so then they start to move well I, uh, I'm going to have to just put a mark on here just to make sure that it's going to stay the same It might have been wise to use jig for doing this routing, but this is a one-off project. I'm not going to make another door of this size, so really I don't want to be bogged down by the process of making jigs. I'd rather just work very carefully and hold it in the right place. It's another tool I've had for a long time, so I'm very used to using it. I know what little quirks it has.
quite old. The, the, the fibres the, feel that it's slightly, slightly dry. There's not much difference between old wood and new once you cut into it. A little bit, you can feel it's slightly, perhaps slightly even more brittle. Well, you workshop chaps must be cringing seeing how my work is wobbling around like this. I'm so used to working on a building site, having kind of makeshift workbenches, that uh, I kind of stop reacting to it now. I do have a bench upstairs, but it's not wide enough for the door here, so it would have to be a makeshift bench, whatever the case. this in the just check that they're all the same. Yep. There's very accurate work that was done here by someone when they built this so probably um, well I know where it was built. It was built at Strum and Trevard Fabric. that they had this building built for themselves so I imagine that they probably tried to do their very best for the boss and I think that probably they used the building the cabin it's a very well built building they probably used it as uh, advertising for the factory It's a fascinating uh, history. Strum and Trevard Fabric. They built Strum and Trevard Fabric built all kinds of wooden buildings that were shipped worldwide. It was a kind of rationalised process, built for the first time, probably. Well, speculating a little bit here. I have read a book about it, but I, it was such a long time ago I don't really remember exactly. So you have to allow for a little bit of speculation. But they built wooden buildings which, among other things, were sent to Italy for earthquake relief because they were fast to build. You could just, these uh, log houses could just be taken down and set back up again. So I can just imagine the boss taking friends out to the cabin and showing what the people are capable of, the hand workers. Let's throw them there by the fabric. And you see the buildings that they built dotted all over the country here, just to this day. They're difficult uh, to restore them and Televada houses because some of the processes were kind of semi-industrial. It's actually easier to restore the older buildings that are hand-built because my favourite kind of work really is remaking handmade things. I don't really have the routines with the woodworking machinery, apart from perhaps the chainsaw. What I'm doing here is I'm just using the chisel to drop the level into the shoulder there, call it that. And then I can use that little plane just good because it can go right into the edges. 
so I can come out from the work. Really very happy with this particular plane. It's not. I don't find it very adjustable. It's a Stanley, but it's not uh, not very good. I don't think. I've got a feeling it's a good idea to cut into here because when I do these cuts here, I don't really want there to be anything underneath there. So I'm going to cut that. I'm going to cut that into there. You see. So that I don't have to mess around with the, this tenon. I'm going to do that on all of those sides there. It'll just allow me to just do a, a cut through. If I use the fane saw to do that then I don't need to use the hand saw in which case the panels can go in. I don't know if there's a difference between the top and the bottom of the can't remember which one is which. Well these certainly go in a lot easier than they came out. Now, don't get your hopes up, this isn't going to fit perfectly with the first attempt because the bevels are staggered. So they'll fit on, they might, they might fit on one side, but it won't fit on the other, that's for sure. Trying to do a dry fit but it's a little bit tight so I'm going to take it off again here. Yeah. A little bit more adjustment. And then I'm just beeswaxing the surfaces so that it'll slip on a little bit more easily. So the job's almost finished now. This has been a Strumman Trevor Fabric building built around about the turn of the century, 1900, a little bit before perhaps. And it was owned by one of the owners of the factory. Once this has been knocked back together, it's ready to go really, put back in its frame, taken up and put in place in the cabin. Obviously the space that the old door was in is now has a gap because the new door is smaller so that had to be filled in there's a little bit of kind of blonde newly exposed woodwork which will actually just tone down if left to its own devices it will take a few years of course but it would be uh, very difficult to color it or something I mean some people try and color wood that's usually very unsuccessful because it never looks the same ever whereas if you just leave it it will even out. Well, there's always the option of painting everything. Well either you've skipped to the end or you're super interested in this kind of thing and so I would like to invite you to see some of the other films on my channel which are in my back catalogue. Welcome to have a look at those. Thank you very much for watching and I also invite you to click the like button and to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and to share it with someone else. That way YouTube gets a really clear message that these are great films that everybody should see and they'll spread it to other people automatically. Thanks very much for watching. Bye bye.